So hello guys, my name is Max and welcome to this video today. We're going to continue to develop our simple Tetris clone using JavaScript and HTML. So where we left off last time, we just got the basic sort of game board drawing uh, where we can, ch where we can uh, change the, and show all the statistics and later the game uh, state itself and other stuff like that. So we'll start today's video by actually doing some refactoring because we really don't want to clump up this Tetris uh, class with uh, too much work on it or too much logic uh, inside of it. So we will factor out all of the draw drawing uh, logic to a new f uh, file that or a new object that we'll call game board. So we can re uh, already now create this game board object on the on the Tetris class and just instead of non-fontaire we can actually uh, require this file here. So let's create it. So we can just create a new file game board.js like that let's define this module so we say define uh, function if I can spell function right that will be great and if I can just escape yeah, anyway so in here we say game board equals class dot extend like usual and we just return it down here so return a game board like that and inside of here you can create a constructor already and it will also have a draw method uh, at the moment here. And the draw method that take our context as a parameter. Anyway, so let's jump back into the Tetris uh, class here. And then here, this should actually be a regular sem semicolon there, I see. Anyway, we can just copy all of the drawing logic and copy that over to the game board. So let's see, paste that in there. And uh, we can actually say this dot blocks here as well. Uh, because we'll need that later uh, when we create more methods on this class here. Yeah, let's see. That's just quite good, you know, at least my opinion. And then we just take all of the drawing logic. And instead of that, we just say this dot game board dot draw to the context, of course. So we go back here in the game board and in the draw. We copy all of this and it will also take the stat object. At least we can't really, uh, since the game board won't have uh, keep all the statistics, we can just change this dot data to actually you can call it tet. Change this to smaller case here. Put some other changes later on here. Anyway, so we can say var tet equals start dot tetra minus so tetra minus is all of the pieces or the, count or the data for all the pieces we'll store later on but tetra minus is called a piece all of the different tetris pieces in uh, yeah they're called tetra minus and there are seven of them in total anyway so that's about it let's see here well we can actually yeah, let's do that soon here. We'll create this uh, stat object first. So let's do that as well. So can say this dot stat uh, equals new stat manager like that. And let's require that module. So you say source stat manager, of course. Right there. Then that will most likely just take that one, for example. So. And then we just put out this dot stat to a second uh, augment to that function, to draw function. So let's create a file right now. So we say stat manager, of course, again, define that module. Come on, manager, like that, class.extend. Let's return it here. Return stat manager. Constructor. It will call uh, itself um, our method that called reset. So let's create a function. So say reset like that, and then we change this to tetra minus. Change all everything to zero. Change this to lowercase. So tot like that 
and we should actually be good to go I think. So let's see here what we have done so far. Let's go back and see. So we refactor out the logic from the Tetris game, also from the Tetris class. So we now have a game board and a stat manager, which we have a function on the game board that we call draw. I think a context and uh, a stat object as augments. And then inside of the game board here, we uh, got the tetraminos object of the stat object, or we get all the statistics for the t all of the tetraminos, and then we draw them uh, to the to the back uh, or to the to our image or to the canvas. Sorry. Anyway, so that should be working exactly the same now if we have done it correctly. But it really isn't. So let's see here. Game board uh, 13. Num oh, we must uh, require the num font, of course. So we can say source num font like that. Don't forget the comma there. Oops, num font. Yeah. So we're now back to the exact same thing that we has before. But then, what is the main reason to have a stat manager, you might wonder. Well, for example, we can create other methods on the stat manager here. So like calculate the score from a different given level and other stuff like that. But one really good example is, for example, when we say, uh, we can create a method here we can call ink tetramino. Tetramino, yes. Uh, take an id as an augment here. Yeah. And you can say this dot tetraminos at that id plus plus, or you can say plus equals one. That's more clear. So we increment the tetraminos at that particular statistics post, and then we can say increment the total value as well. And by doing this, we will never forget to update the total uh, object as at the same time as we update the id here, for example. So let's make it's uh, yeah, not as easy for us to make mistakes like that, that we can ruin the game for us. So that's why we refactor out all of the logic to different classes in the game. And that we also, uh, what do you say? Yeah, and it's also for like make the uh, game easier to read and uh, more clear on what different parts of the code are doing here. Yeah, so what can we do from here? Well. We can actually go back here to the uh, to the main class actually and change some stuff up here. So I decided I did some testing before here that we want to have a handle inputs method. That was a bit that will get a bit in the way here. So they can just remove that function and remove the input uh, augment to the update method instead. So let's do the same thing here. We, are, we remove this one and uh, put uh, the input uh, object uh, as an augment to the method right there instead. So we can actually in implement this input um, input uh, object right now, but that will do in the engine here. So we can go all the way down to the bottom and let's create this input object now. So we create this self remarking function, the same with, way we did with the content manager and the uh, canvas element. So inside of here we can create this i object that will have all of the scope. So we'll just return the i object down here so we won't forget that later. And we'll have our bindings object private to this function. And our pressed object, our down object, then our released uh, array like that. And even though we won't use, really use the mouse in this game, we can add a mouse object as well. So that's cool. So let's um, start here by declaring some, uh, what do you say, some, uh, some objects that we'll need for like enumerate uh, different presses and uh, yeah, keeps, uh, keep track of different presses and stuff. So create a buttons and that's for the mouse buttons. So the neg uh, left button will have the ID of negative one. The middle button will have the ID of negative two. And the right button will have the ID of negative three. Now we create a, a keys object. And for now, let's just uh, have the space bar. So space, if you have watched any of my different other tutorials, you know that that key code is 32. 
Then we have the left arrow, that's 37. Up arrow, 38. Uh, right arrow, 39. And lastly the down arrow, 40, like that. And then do we just loop with that character object right here. That will loop from 60 all the way up to 90 to get all of the key codes in the English alphabet. And then we just mm, put them to the keys object here. So you say string dot from shortcode and set that equal to the uh, character code right there. So let's log out the keys object right now just so we can see what that looks like. Um, so let's see why didn't that really print out. Let's see here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. It should be printed. Oh, we're stocking some loop. Yeah, I forgot the plus plus here. Sorry for that, guys. Let's just close this down, hopefully. Yeah, be right back, guys, when I figure that out. See you guys soon. Yeah, so I'm back, guys. I figured out a way to close the tab. Anyway, so now we can see there that we have the object here with every key code from 60 all the way up to uh, set, uh, 90, which is set, and 60, which uh, apparently was uh, less than. But we are probably just interested from the 65 all the way up to 90, so let's change that. So we go from 65 all, up to, uh, all the way up to 90. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah. That looks better, at least in my opinion. Yeah, so now we can uh, just say stuff like if we want to figure out which key code uh, uh, B has, for example, 66 apparently, but then we can just say uh, stuff like uh, keys dot B to log that out. Or we can say T, for example, that's apparently 84 and other stuff like that. And that will be really handy later on. But so far, they're just uh, available inside of this scope here. So we create them available uh, on the I object as well here. So say I dot buttons equals buttons and I dot keys equals keys here. So that's cool. So let's start by creating our first method on the on the input uh, variable here. So you can say uh, bind key. That will be equal to a function right there. And then you can say action and keys. So we can take both arrays of keys and single of keys. So we can say if the type of keys is a number, uh, then we just want to take the bindings at that key and set that equal to the action. Else, we want to loop through all the keys. So we say for for i equals zero, i is less than keys dot length, i plus plus. Don't forget the plus plus <laughs> here, guys. And here we we'll say uh, bindings add. Uh, keys at i equals to the action. So that was the first method right there. So let's create another method. This is a private method as well. So we say get code, take an event as an augment. And then we can say uh, uh, if, oh, let's actually do it, what t equals e dot type. Let's say if t is equal to key down or T is equal to key up. Then we just want to return the key code like we have done normally in all the previous games here. But here we can also listen for the button presses. So we say if T is equal to mouse down or T is equal to mouse up. Then we want to do a switch statement of the E dot button, which button it was that was pressed. So our cases here, so we have case zero, case one, whoops case 2, which in order is the left, middle and right button, so we just say return uh, buttons left, for example. And then we change this to middle, and this to right here, of course. So this is uh, so we can get codes later on, so here we can say function on down, take an event as an augment, whoops, so flat. Here we can say uh, var action equals bindings get code 
of the E here. So for example, if it was a mouse press, then it would turn a negative one, negative two, negative three, because that's the IDs we store in this button objects. Or if it is a mouse, uh, key press, then it will just return the key code normally here. Anyway, but then if we don't have that bind that key to anything, then the action will be undefined. So you can say if not the action. So if it's uh, for example, yeah, it is undefined or null or zero or something like that. But the zero case, we won't really care for that for now at least. But then we just want to return this function. Else we want to set the pressed of that action equal to the opposite of the down of that action. And then we always want to set the down of that action equals to true. So this means that uh, the first time we press a key, then down will be false or undefined in this case. We will soon see that. So this will be true uh, and action will be true. But then if we call this uh, function again, then this uh, will have the value of true. So this will be evaluated as false. So we won't update the press uh, all the, uh, over and over again. Anyway, and then we just want to prevent the default behavior here. So we say prevent default of the browser here. And that's just a JavaScript method that is on the event object. And this unup um, function is quite similar. So we say our action equals bindings uh, get code e again if no action uh, return. But here we want to push that uh, unup action to the released uh, uh, array. And I just prevent the default behavior again. So prevent default right there. And we'll also create an other method that say on context. That will uh, be called when we right click on the canvas. So if you see here now, you see when we right click on the canvas, this uh, dialog comes up where we can save the picture and save the picture and inspect the element. And we want to prevent that from happening if we have bind the right click to any event so or an action I should say so we say if bindings buttons the right so if we have an action at that uh, post here we want to just want to prevent the default behavior again so that's all of the uh, event uh, what do you say up and down events we want to capture but we also want to capture the uh, mouse mo uh, movement of the mouse. So we say uh, on move, maybe. Okay, say on mouse. Now let's say on move. Take an event as an argument. So we say well, l equals e dot target like that. Then we just take a make a do while loop. One of the <laughs> rare, rare cases where that is useful. So we say parent offset to get that stuff. Now we want to calculate the offset of the object. So we say just want to say the offset in y direction, x direction to zero at start here. So we say ox plus equals l dot offset uh, left, of course. And now y plus equals, p plus equals l dot offset uh, top, yes. Now we just want to update the mouse. So we say mouse dot x equals e dot client. Minus our x mouse dot y equals e dot client dot client y minus our y like that, and I just want to prevent the default behavior again. So that should be almost everything for input listener. So we just add some more methods here. So we say I dot clear pressed. That we just loop to all of the release keys. We save our i equals zero. i is less than release or length. i plus plus down. Whoops, uh, down. Released at i equals false. And the press to an, a new object here, and then release to an empty array like that. And then we have all the pressed method. Take an action as an argument, as an argument. I just want to return. Uh, press the, if the, yeah. 
if the button is pressed. We have that down as well. That we just return if the yeah, down has this action pressed. And then we have the released, uh, if we can spell that right. Released, yeah, I think that's somewhat right spell. But instead, as an array, we want to return the, uh, if the index, or we will check if it have that post, we say return released index of the action is greater or equal to zero. And if it don't exist, it will return negative one, which is uh, of course smaller than zero. So then it will return false. But if it has the index at some place in the array, it will return that index and that is uh, always uh, greater than or equal than zero. So there's just one thing left to do here on the input object, uh, input uh, thing here. And that is just to bind all of the uh, methods here to uh, the events on the document and on the canvas frame. So you can say canvas frame. And if you don't remember the canvas frame, that is uh, this canvas here, the one that we click on and we draw to. And also you say canvas frame dot on uh, uh, mouse down equals on down canvas frame dot on mouse up equals on up canvas frame dot on uh, mouse move equal move on on mouse move yes equals on move yes and then we have canvas frame dot on context menu equals on context like that and then we just want to bind the uh, key, key down events here all, all the key presses we say on key down equals on down document dot on key up equals on up document and we also want to say let's say that you click down on the canvas thing and then move out and released then we will also want to catch that move, so you say on mouse up here as well. Uh, mouse up equals on up. So that should actually be it. So let's reload the page and see if we got any errors. No, no errors, so that's good. Let's see if the uh, on context the uh, function works. So you can say all through here for now. So if you can see here now, I can right click on thing, but when I reload the page, yeah, you can see that no menu pops up, so that means that that works at least. So we are now capturing all of the key states, or all the key presses and all the stuff like that. So that's cool. So let's just move it through here. Um, so yeah, what can we do from here? Well, we can go to the main. Let's bind all of the input presses. So you can say, put a bind, uh, called space actually input dot keys dot space and let's capture all of the other ones as well here uh, so we have uh, left up right and down and then we'll change this to arrows to the arrow counterpart so we say arrow left up, right, and down. And don't don't forget uh, that we also need to call this clear pressed function every frame. So we can do that in a, and that's the same concept that we have to call the canvas flip method each frame. So we can go to the game actually back to the game here and, and then above or below the canvas flip it really doesn't matter we want to call input dot clear pressed don't forget that that's really important for it to work here anyway so let's see if it works so we can go through the tetris now for example and here we can say if input dot pressed uh, space uh, console log space is nice <laughs> oh, sorry, <right>, guys. <coughs> mm. Yeah, sorry for that. I just got um, 
yeah, cough attack or something like that. So let's see if that works. Undefined is not a function. Let's see. Mm, main 25. Uh, oh, not bind. We won't say bind key, of course. Length of undefined. And 162. Let's see. Uh. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, we want to call return here as well. That should work. Let's see here. Yeah, it's under find some some uh, where as well. So we have probably have misspelled here. Down arrow. Oh, we have them. Uh, we have them. Uh, sorry, in the as the suffix is here, but inside of the main, I put them at the start. So <laughs> my bad. You change that like that, and it should be good to go. Yeah. So now when I press space, yeah, space is nice, it's printed out. So let's see if the other ones works as well. Can say down. Yeah, you can see when I hold down the space bar, the message is printed out. And the release as well, so you can see see released. It's really not that common to use that, but when I release the key, yeah. It shows to the canvas, or they print out the message. So that's cool. Just to see if the if it works with the mouse events as well. Let's actually log out the input the mouse.x for example. And then in the back at the main here. Let's let's bind several keys to uh, the space event so we can say input buttons well, dot uh, right. So now when I right click on the canvas, oh, we didn't uh, show that uh, uh, on on the yeah, global here as well. So we just say idle mouse equals mouse. Let's see. Yeah. So now when I press here, when I right click on the canvas, you can see that the x coordinate is is uh, printed out, and the same goes for the space bar. Yeah, so we now have a working input handler. Quite easy or, or quite functional and really useful uh, to use here. Sorry, I just need to drink it. Yeah, so finally we can continue with the game here. But before we do that, uh, I just need to take a break. So be right back, guys. Yeah, so I'm back guys. So now a working way of capturing all the inputs on a page and the mouse presses and other stuff like that and the movement of the mouse. So that's good. So now we can finally move on to finishing the game or to start developing the game at least. Anyway, so let's just get rid of this for now. And let's go to the main here and let's remove the binding of the right uh, button press here. Well. But that's actually. Ah, oh, come on. You could actually like uh, use to capture the. Uh, what do you say the? Uh, the the uh, W A S D as well. So let's see. Our left. That's A. I think yes. Up W. Uh, then V here and down is S of course so now we can both control with the arrow keys and with the W A S uh, W A S D or whatever however you uh, say that acronym yeah so let's finally get some tetraminos on the page so let's create a new file 